Liverpool possessed possibly the finest tramway in the United Kingdom. Horse cars were introduced in 1859, electrification followed in 1898, new trams were built until 1942, and the last extension opened in 1944. However, following the Second World War, the decision was taken to scrap the trams, the first route closing in June 1948. Just over nine years later, the 98-mile system had disappeared. Today, there are few signs of the city's tramway heritage. They include former depot buildings and note the liver bird incorporated into the stone plaque. A handful of traction poles which once supported the overhead wires. The occasional feeder box. But perhaps most important of all, the tram car works and depot at Edge Lane. Built in 1928, it was responsible for constructing hundreds of new trams. Today, it is still used by buses, but within its confines, a few lengths of long disused rail can still be seen. Close by the old Riverside Station in the large object store at Prince's Dock, a number of trams were for several years on public display, including number 20, a Birkenhead open topper of 1901, and three Liverpool cars. Number 762, an English electric bogey of 1931. Number 43, a horse tram of about 1892. And number 245, a streamlined double-decker built at Edge Lane in 1938. This was one of the cars involved in the final procession which marked the closure of the Liverpool trams on September the 14th, 1957. The star turn was sister car 293, which had been specially repainted in cream and green and was destined to be the city's last tram. The driver was Mr. Tom Webster. To the accompaniment of the transport band and a cacophony of ship's hooters, the 13 trams edged their way through the crowds gathered at the pier head out towards Lord Street and the city centre. The policeman on duty outside Lime Street Station hardly glances at the cavalcade as he waves the 13 cars along the city's most famous street on their last journey to Broad Green and Baring Park via Edge Lane. By dusk, the crowds thronging the route and the small boys who had secured precarious vantage points had gone and the trams had passed into history. Today, the trams are but a memory, like the ships which once graced the River Mersey. The three world-famous waterfront buildings, the Royal Liver Building, the Cunard Building and the Port of Liverpool Building, may be gleaming and spotless but they stand as if waiting and watching for a world that has gone. In the late 1920s, all three were begrimed by soot and smoke from the vessels that entered the port. And weaving amongst them were the ferry boats, which daily brought thousands of commuters across the river from both Birkenhead and Wallasey. In Picars, up to 1,500 people could pour from a single ferry boat. Many would then make their way to the impressive Pierhead tram terminus, which had been redesigned in 1921 
to include three large turning circles or loops. All the trams leaving the pier head passed beneath the seven mile long Liverpool overhead railway which had opened in 1893 and provided a swift efficient link along the line of docks. In the next sequence, three cars depart from the Pier Head South Loop. 288 of 1901, 522 of 1909 and 696 of 1926, a car we shall see again 20 years later. Slow-moving, horse-drawn vehicles cause severe congestion on the dock road, whilst beneath the overhead structure, locos owned by the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board haul trains between the south and north docks. At this time, many of the city's trams were of the four-wheel Bellamy type, with open balconies and vestibules, of which 400 were built between 1900 and 1912. Conscious of public demand for an improvement in tramcar design and riding quality, the tramway's manager, Percy Priestley, introduced a variety of new cars. Number 19, built in 1926 with enclosed top deck, is seen in Church Street and alongside the ornate tram shelter in Clayton Square. Number 88, a totally enclosed car of 1929, is glimpsed among the street vendors lining the pavement in Church Street, while 746 was one of the first trams in Liverpool to be fitted with a partial vestibule in late 1927. None of the guests arriving for a fashionable wedding at St. Luke's Church seemed to spare a glance for the trams, negotiating the Renshaw street Lisi Street Junction. The cars include number 32, a priestly standard of 1923, as well as several Bellamy's. Further up Lisi Street Hill, a Bellamy swings from Catherine Street into Myrtle Street. Nineteen thirty four was the year in which the Under River Kingsway Road Tunnel was opened, linking Liverpool to Birkenhead. But the year started badly for the tramways when Bellamy Car one eight one overturned at the foot of Paddington on january the third. The runaway involved the first loss of life since electrification and hastened the demise of the short wheelbase cars having only handbrakes. Note the controller roped to the platform before the buckled lower saloon is pushed back to Edge Lane Works. To commemorate the opening of the road tunnel in July 1934, every city street and public building was festooned with decorations and huge crowds gathered to watch King George V and Queen Mary perform the opening ceremony. For some, the occasion simply proved too much, but others obtained grandstand seats from the top deck of a Bellamy, passing the tunnel entrance.
The circular-shaped tunnel had originally been designed to carry double-decker trams in the lower half, which would have allowed through running between Liverpool and the two tramways on the Cheshire side at Birkenhead and Wallasey. However, the local authorities failed to agree, and by the time the royal couple arrived in Birkenhead, Wallasey's trams had already been abandoned. In this short sequence taken at Liscard in 1932, brush-built car 65 of 1915 is inbound to Seacombe Ferry, whilst car 5 of 1902 is outbound to New Brighton. Wallace's four routes had all disappeared by November the 30th, 1933, replaced largely by open staircase Leyland Titans. Birkenhead's tram routes all started at Woodside Ferry, and here we see a 1913 double-decker and one of the Prenton bogey cars of 1902. In 1930, Eric Parkinson filmed two of the unique double-deckers allocated to the new ferry route. Originally single-deckers, they were rebuilt with low roofs and knifeboard seating to pass under a restricted bridge. The new ferry route closed in December 1931, and Birkenhead's last tram operated on July the 17th 1937. Whilst continuing to build reserve track routes, it was not until 1931 that a radical improvement in the Liverpool tram fleet was begun, and eventually over 250 bogey cars and 100 two-axle cars were built at Edge Lane. A striking new livery of privet green and white earned them the nickname Green Goddesses, after a play of the day. This livery contrasted with the former Crimson Lake, Cream and Gold Leaf. Older standard cars were rebuilt or modernised, and another innovation was the improved destination display shown on car 281 in Lord Street, where it meets one of the Robinson cabin cars of 1934. This sequence is from the Huntley archive. another of the modern bogey cars is seen departing from the quadrant terminus outside Lime Street Station. By 1939 the tram system seemed secure. With the outbreak of war the cream areas on the buses and trams were either painted brown or heavily varnished. Note the white mudguards on the buses. No, not a futuristic tram but a barrage balloon. Others are seen on the landing stage. To aid visibility in the blackout, the fenders on the trams were painted white. The area around South Castle Street and Lord Street was devastated during the bombing of May 1941. A streamliner heads south, probably on Route 45, whilst a group of standard cars are seen arriving and departing on the outer circular routes, 26 and 27. These were later the first lines to be abandoned in June 1948. Note the partially completed Anglican Cathedral and the remains of the Customs House. Still sporting its pre-war white roof ends, a streamliner turns south in front of the Adelphi Hotel. By 1945, the trams, the track and the infrastructure were in urgent need of repair. 
After a brief flirtation with further modernization, the council voted to replace the trams by buses over a ten-year period. Two rare colour sequences. A baby grand still displays the wartime slogan, Don't Waste Bread, in 1947, and cars 696 and 771 meet at the Lime Street, Elliott Street Junction. Trams and bus scenes taken from a film made by G. H. Hesketh in 1949. From 1947, a new green and white livery was introduced and the large curved fleet title replaced by the city crest. Stanley Eads visited Liverpool in 1950. Mark's Bogey 861 departs from Seaforth on Route 18. Cars 975 and 182 still carry the drab wartime livery. Note the traffic indicators and glass ventilouvers still in situ. 969 turns into New Quay towards the North Loop, which was abandoned in January 1951. And finally, a particularly grubby cabin car 794 on the rarely photographed Route 30. Peter Matthews took his films in late 1952, by which time the handbrake cars had all gone and most of the streamliners and baby grands had either been rebuilt or repainted, but the closures continued even where there had been extensive pre-war track renewal. Car 937 negotiates the dip under Allerton Station outbound to Garston. Note the Malian Taunton swing link bogies. All this class were allocated to Garston Depot. Car 968 is city-bound along the Horrocks Avenue extension, opened in 1939. Whilst 869 was sold to Glasgow and is the only streamliner to be preserved. Car 796 is on a PCAR duty to Kirby. Car 901 approaches the centre loop on Route 29. Seven seven eight is an elliptical roof Priestley bogey car of 1933, and 804 is unusual in having modern style fleet numbers. The cabin cars were the heaviest vehicles in the fleet at 18 tonnes. A delightful shot of one of the ex-Lancashire and Yorkshire pug locomotives passing under the overhead railway. A cabin car outbound to Utting Avenue East climbs up towards James Street Station. The Garston routes closed suddenly on the 6th of June 1953 and the remaining Maley streamliners were sold to Glasgow. These last day colour sequences by Bert Roberts have been included purely for their rarity value. The next major abandonment was the 29 route, which closed on April the 3rd, 1954, thereby releasing a further 24 trams for sale to Glasgow. These few views were taken by Bert Roberts on the last day of operation on the outer section of the line.
Following the closure of the 29, all the remaining tram routes were diverted to terminate at the Pierhead South Loop, including routes 6A and 10B. The basic service was now provided by the streamliners and baby grands, but a handful of older bogey cars survived, including five English electrics at Edge Lane, and these were filmed by Jim Joyce, and include 760 being guided into the depot, while 764 waits to take up service. A Rush R 10B departs up Edge Lane towards Old Swan. Nine oh three, seen here on Route nineteen, was one of the second batch of cars sold to Glasgow, but it did not leave Liverpool until October nineteen fifty four. It was renumbered ten forty three and survived until nineteen fifty nine. Seven six six, one of the Edge Lane built nineteen thirty one cars on English electric trucks, featured in an enthusiast tour on September the fourth, nineteen fifty four. Every nook and cranny was covered, including Napier's siding off the East Lancashire Road, as well as the 1944 extension to Delph Lane at Kirby. Bert Roberts also caught the car on the single track under Walton Lane Railway Bridge. Reversing at Barring Park. Laying over in the sunshine at Page Moss. And outside Walton Depot. Alf Jacob filmed the same tour, with 766 on the Priory Road football siding, serving Goodison Park, home of Everton. And in Rowe Street, the Rush R Terminus off Lime Street, abandoned in February 1955. Lime Street provided a starting point for a film taken by Roy Thompson in 1954. The tracks leading into Row Street being visible on the right. The reduced role of the trams is clearly demonstrated, with Church Street and Lord Street clogged with a wealth of different buses, AEC, Crosley, Daimler, most of them on tramway replacements. Note the policeman vainly trying to relieve the increasing traffic congestion which had been unfairly blamed on the trams. Numbers 182, 266 and 154 join the queue in Lord Street. G.F. Ashwell took a few brief sequences at Page Moss, including car 887 sold to Glasgow in October 1954, and car 906.
one small lad is so fascinated by the antics of the cameraman, he nearly misses the tram. The 10B was the last service operating out of the city along Kensington and Prescott Road. Following the closure of the 10C in 1952, it operated every 20 minutes with a few rush hour extras and no Sunday service. Frank and Ron Oldfield filmed the line during its last week of operation. On a cold morning in March 1955, 872 picks up a handful of passengers at Page Moss for the journey into the city. The section of track from Prescott to Knotty Ash was relayed on private right of way in 1922. Cars arrive and depart from Finch Lane. Two five one negotiates the junction with Route forty at Knotty Ash. Car 260 speeds along a snowbound East Prescott Road towards Queen's Drive and Old Swan. With an intensive rush hour service, a third track was installed at Black Horse Lane, Old Swan for short workings and extras. Nine oh six traverses St Oswald Street Junction, still used for depot access to Edge Lane, since Green Lane, glimpsed here in the background, closed to trams in April nineteen fifty four. Two six three crosses the disused junction with Green Lane itself, whilst two four six approaches the crossover on the west side of the junction. From Old Swan to Fairfield, the route followed the course of the city's first short-lived street tramway, opened in July 1861. Car 961 pursues a bus along Prescott Road and crosses the railway bridge at Stanley Station. The crossover at Fairfield Street was rarely used except in emergencies. At the junction of Prescott Street and London Road, the 10B joined forces with the 14 and 19, still serving the north end of the city. The last 10B car 249 left the pier head at midnight on March the 5th, 1955. A few months later, W.A. Camwell took these scenes at the South Loop. Car 947 is in pristine condition, as is the Baby Grand, filmed by W.J. Wise later the same year. Devoid of adverts and with a fresh coat of paint, it is possible to admire the pleasing design of the bodywork. The car retains its original Rawlins wind-down windows and a pair of roof vents. Spot the differences. 
Latterly, it was claimed no two Liverpool trams were identical. This HR2 streamliner on EMB heavyweight trucks still has its original wind-down windows, but eight square vents above the lower saloon windows. Whilst the Baby Grand has sliding windows and no roof vents, plus filled in side destination boxes. The next streamliner on EMB lightweight trucks has centrally positioned wind-down windows but no square vents. 900 has the correct as-built six vents. Whilst 185 possesses four centrally positioned sliding windows and a small ventilator slits in the roof curve. This HR2 retains twin destination boxes but painted over. Whilst on 979 they have been removed. Also on Baby Grand 254. Finally, this streamliner has neither destination boxes nor square vents. With the closure of the 10B, the remaining English electrics, cabins and Marks bogies had been withdrawn and scrapped at Edge Lane. The fleet now consisted entirely of streamlined bogey cars and baby grands. There were six remaining routes and two depots, Edge Lane and Walton. Some of the cars were decidedly shabby, others which developed faults were simply scrapped, but quite a number were repainted during the summer of 1955. The driver of this streamliner relishes the end of speed restriction notice. Next to close were routes 13 and 14, city to Lower Lane or Utting Avenue East via Breck Road. Breck Road was a narrow, congested thoroughfare flanked by rows of terraced houses. It included both single and interlaced track. These colour sequences were taken by John McCann in the autumn of 1955. Almost casually, the duty inspector orchestrates a line of bogey cars entering the loop at Pier Head. Car 990 looks superb in its fresh coat of paint. but even paint cannot quite disguise the sagging front end on 156. On the 4th of September 1955, Bert Roberts filmed lines of cars awaiting scrap on Edge Lane Dump before joining an enthusiast tour on 165. This was one of the final batch of streamliners which entered service in late 1937. Mounted on EMB lightweight trucks, the 78-seater car had 4x40 horsepower motors 
and a low voltage master controller with 22 notches, of which the weak feel notches were later removed. Arguments still rage even today over the speeds attained by these fine cars. Their acceleration was first rate and on level track with a clear run, the sky seemed the limit. Again, the tour covered every rail joint and length of track, including Walton Depot, the rare Picard stub at Grant Gardens, and routes 13 and 14 shortly to close. At Utting Avenue East, the terminus of Route 14, 165 swings onto the former 29 tracks to Lower Lane, now in rush hour use only. The driver was Harry Tyndale of Edge Lane Depot. For the enthusiasts, he was the Sterling Moss of trams, a man totally in control of his machine and prepared to achieve the maximum performance in terms of speed and braking. Unfortunately, on the 186 tour in July 1956, Harry Tyndale accelerated through a disused junction and severed the trolley head. Undeterred, the enthusiast pushed the car to lower lane, where Alf Jacob filmed the necessary repairs. This was the last enthusiast tour in Liverpool to use a bogey car. In September 1956, Snowplow 4, ex-standard car 646 of 1924, was made available to Frank and Ron Oldfield so that they could record some classic Liverpool tram sounds emitting from the car's DK20 motors. Fortunately, the event was also filmed. Looking relatively clean with its K3 controller, the old handbrake car proceeded smartly up Edge Lane. Watched by bemused schoolboys, the car made two complete circuits of the roundabout. Not without a little assistance. On arrival at Broad Green, Frank Oldfield swings the trolley for the return journey to the depot where, after a formal thank you for their remarkable private tour, the staff drove the car up and down the depot yard. SP4 was scrapped in 1957. The next two routes to go were the heavily used 19 City to Kirby via Breckfield Road and the 44 City to Southdean via Scotland Road and Everton Valley. From Walton Village, both routes shared the longest stretch of reserve track on the system, nearly five miles, open progressively between 1924 and 1944. These sequences were filmed by Stan Watkins.
Car 247 on a short working 19B circumnavigates lower lane roundabout. On the countrified section beyond the city boundary, the tram-only bridge over Knowsley Brook was always a favourite location for photographers. The 44 covered two of the city's most famous thoroughfares, Scotland Road and Everton Valley, before joining the 19 on Walton Lane. Two three seven reverses at the isolated South Dean terminus, whilst two thirteen approaches the same spot inbound from Kirby where a sister car is seen on the terminal loop. Suddenly waking up to the fact that their famous green goddesses would soon be gone, the corporation made their own film in 1956. Baby Grand 247 emerges from the trams only part of Walton Depot and nips smartly along Carriesbrook Road to take up service on Route 19. Car 250 is seen at several locations, Lower Lane, at the city boundary, crossing the central reservation to the roadside private right-of-way alongside the East Lancashire Road. At speed approaching Hornhouse Lane and entering the terminal loop at Kirby. This fine elevated view shows the magnificent sweep of the city's suburban light railways. Note the prefab estate in the background. Two fifty again back at Lower Lane. Despite the importance of this location, it was always marked by a blue request stop. Two elevated views of the Lord Street Paradise Street Junction. Note the bus on Route 11 pretending to be a tram and stopping in the middle of the road to pick up its passengers. Two baby grands pass Liverpool's town hall, built in 1754. With the closure of the 19 and 44, all 31 surviving bogey cars were withdrawn, and Stan Watkins filmed their final journey on Sunday the 4th of November from Edge Lane to Kirby.
992 was the highest number carried by a Liverpool tram. The next morning, the corporation recorded the succession of extraordinary manoeuvres, whereby the trams were pulled and dragged bodily onto the tracks of the rail system inside the Kirby trading estate, by means of a diamond crossing installed in 1952. With their trolleys tied down, a few cars at a time were hauled away by one of the corporation's Vulcan Drury 060 diesel shunters to their final resting place in some long disused sidings of a former meatpacking factory. Despite strong press demands for their reinstatement, Owing to the oil shortage caused by the Suez Crisis, these fine cars were all scrapped. The last being 186 in April 1957. At the same time as the closure of routes 19 and 44, all the 6s and 6As were diverted via Lime Street and Church Street, and the tracks in William Brown Street were abandoned. These views were taken from a vantage point in the Adelphi Hotel and show cars negotiating the Lime Street Ranley Street junction. Two cars outbound on Route 40 pass in front of the Adelphi, ready to swing up Brownlow Hill. The tracks on the left were abandoned in June 1953 with the closure of Routes 8 and 33. An inbound car on Route 40 descends Ranley Street. The outbound track was abandoned in 1949. An outbound car on Route 40 negotiates the single track in Brownlow Hill. These films come from the Robin Hannay collection. The once giant system was now reduced to two routes operating from one depot with an ever dwindling number of baby grands. The last enthusiast special was held on car 245 on the 8th of September 1957. Sporting a rather bedraggled paper notice, the car circumnavigates the loop at Pier Head. Two four five was later selected by the corporation for preservation. This was also the first day in service for the official last car, 293, in its special cream and green livery with its delightful silver truck.
Despite the imminent closure, some Liverpudlians actually thought 293 was a new car. To conclude, two films of The Last Roots. The first by John McCann. The Baby Grands were an economy version of the Streamliners, with 70-seater bodies mounted upon EMB 9-foot flexible trucks. They were powered by two 60-horsepower motors. Special EMB interlock boxes were fitted to renovated controllers removed from old Bellamy cars. Primarily designed for street running, the baby grounds were never totally at home on the 27 miles of reserve track. Two six four approaches one of the typical shelters along the reserve track at Finch Lane. The windscreen wiper helps the driver obtain a clear view of the single track section at the foot of Brownlow Hill. And now three views of 293 on the 6A. Firstly, climbing the one-way single line in West Derby Street. Secondly, at the roundabout in Edge Lane, which replaced a triangular junction in June 1951. And thirdly, approaching Bowering Park Terminus. The conductor appears to be a decided novice. An entire range of special tickets, including workmen's returns, were printed for the last week and bell punches hired from London Transport. Cars were filled to capacity, with many Liverpudlians making sentimental last rides and obtaining souvenir tickets. This view clearly shows the EMB interlocking box fitted on top of the old K3 controller. Note the glove on the right hand only, used to grip the air brake lever. On the 14th of September 1957, 293 was also the last service car on Route 6A. On arrival at Edge Lane Depot, the points are turned and the car is driven in to be prepared for the final procession. Two seven four had the dubious honour of being the last green goddess in passenger service. Fully loaded, the car left the pier head at two minutes past four.
On arrival at Page Moss, the inspector ordered everybody off, and the car made its lonely way round the roundabout for the final time. Goodbye, Old Faithful. With nothing more than a scrawled chalk inscription, 274 vanished into the depot at 4.55 p.m. Regular tramway operation in Liverpool had come to an end. Only the closing procession remained. For a few unforgettable moments, Lime Street was once again filled to capacity with trams as the funeral cortege made its way to Baring Park. Car 264 was the second vehicle in the cavalcade. and was closely followed by 214, driven by Walter Benstead. One wonders what thoughts were passing through the minds of these men who had for so many years provided such an excellent service for the Liverpool public. The second film of the last two routes was taken by Ron Oldfield and includes these fine aerial views of the South Loop, now reduced to serving two lines, the 6A and the 40. By September 1957, another unique Liverpool institution had also disappeared. The Dockers' Umbrella, the Liverpool Overhead Railway, the last train running on December the 30th, 1956. Online video will shortly be releasing a film of this unique line.
Ironically, this loading island in Lime Street was only installed in February 1957. Two cars pass at the junction of London Road and Pembroke Place. An outbound car turns out of West Derby Street up the steeply graded Mount Vernon. The building on the left, like so many of Liverpool's buildings, has since been demolished. Cresting the hill, the tracks curve down Edge Lane towards Durning Road, former junction with the outer circular routes, 26 and 27. Climbing up towards Edge Lane Works, both tram tracks were situated in the right-hand carriageway. Replacement bus stops. Right to the end, Edge Lane still provided a number of peak hour extras to cater for the many neighbourhood factories. And between South Bank Road and Bins Road, there were staggered sidings, one in each direction. At Mill Lane, the former junction with the 49 route, the wires were retained to a feeder box, whilst the tracks had been relayed. Three delightful lamps marked the beginning of Liverpool's first ever stretch of segregated reserve track, the famous grass tracks, which eventually totaled over 27 miles. The brainchild of city engineer John Brodie, the first length was opened as far as Broad Green on September the 27th, 1914, and extended into the countryside at Barring Park on April the 2nd, 1915. They consisted of turfed sleeper track flanked by hedges. Irritatingly, the trams had to return to the roadway to cross the many suburban railway bridges. One particularly narrow crossing was over the railway at Broad Green. Originally, the trams continued a short distance into the park itself. All this area has now disappeared under a motorway. The 40 was a relatively new route, being introduced as late as 1936, between the city and Page Moss, via Edge Lane, Brookside Avenue and East Prescott Road. It involved the construction of several new stretches of track, including Brownlow Hill, a relatively lightly trafficked road leading up past the university to Crown Street. The first part included a short length of single line controlled by signal lights. The fine Georgian buildings on the right of the picture were demolished to provide additional space for the university. Viewed from Paddington, the site of the 1934 runaway, a car hugs the curb as it turns into Crown Street, 
a single line used by inbound 6A cars and outbound number 40 cars. All this area has since been redeveloped. At Oak Vale, the 40 turned northeast along Edge Lane Drive. On the morning of the last day, defective car 272 was pushed by 257 and 263 in Brookside Avenue. At Page Moss, 254 uses the crossover. Sometimes in wet weather, Liverpool drivers would seize the chance to change ends, to stop water leaking onto the controllers from the bodywork. Two nine three must have been the most photographed tram in Liverpool's history. The final cavalcade reverses at Baring Park. passing the siding in Bins Road on their way back to the depot. Note the 6A and 40 bus stops now in situ. Ironically, most of the trams were scrapped in and around the very works where they had been built. Only a few were to escape the hammer and the flames. 245 preserved by the corporation and 293 which had been sold to the Seashore Trolley Museum in America. It left for the docks on May the 7th, 1958. Hauled by one of Pickford's Scammell tractors, it is overtaken by a bus on Route 60.
this car is still in America, but not serviceable. Attempts to bring it back to Merseyside have always failed. With the passing of the trams, many familiar sights and sounds disappeared. The ornate enamel stop signs. The point irons carried on all the cars. The ritual of turning the seats. And, of course, the men and women who for years had been known to generations of Liverpudlians by face, if not by name. And the tower wagon in case of emergencies. However, for the enthusiast, it was still possible to ride on a green goddess, albeit in Glasgow. But here they used bow collectors instead of trolleys, this being only one of several changes made on their arrival. The cars were never popular with the Glasgow crews. On February the 21st, 1960, a tour was organised by the Liverpool University Public Transport Society in an effort to raise sufficient funds to preserve 869 Glasgow 1055. The tour took six hours and was attended by 94 people. The car covered all sections of the Glasgow system including portions not normally seen by a green goddess. This view is on the Great Western Road. Eventually, the students at the university raised sufficient money to buy the car, and the Merseyside Tramway Preservation Society was founded in 1960 its aim being to bring 869 back to England. On June the 8th, 1960, the car left Dolmarnock Depot for the very last run ever made by a green goddess under its own power. On arrival at Coppler Hill Works, the tram was driven inside to be lifted off its bogies. It is now 30 years since 869 was rescued for preservation, and a portion of the profits from the sale of this video will go towards the preservation of the car and to the Merseyside Tramway Preservation Society. The makers of this video hope that 869 will soon be restored to working order and can be seen and enjoyed at the National Tramway Museum at Kreitsch in Derbyshire. And there is even a possibility that Baby Grand 245 may shortly operate on the seaside tramway at Blackpool. This would indeed be a happy conclusion to this story of Liverpool's trams.